All right, so continuing our discussion, part two. Okay. So I said I wanted to touch back on Dr. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Phil. I can't take the voice. We got to open up the country. <laughs> we got to get people back to work so we can get this economy started and got to get it up and running again because people are hurting. People are going to die. We can't <laughs> let the cure be worse than the illness. <laughs> so what is the cure? What's the illness? The illness is corona. And then you go outside and the cure is death. Right. And you're going to die. Like, what are you talking about? I don't even understand what the hell you mean. When you are faced with go outside or die, when you are faced when you are faced with whatever the hell else and death, mm. how does anything outweigh death? <laughs> I don't understand that. I don't, how does any I don't how does me that. going to get a pizza and having a beer with my buddy from across town outweigh the fact that that little interaction could kill me? Right. Now let's just say it don't. Let's say it don't kill me. Let's okay. say what it does is make me a carrier. And then I carry that motherfucker right back home mm-hmm. to whoever else is living underneath my roof. Yes. And then it causes everybody else to be ill and die. And right. then you the only motherfucker standing in that mug because everybody else is dead. And that's if you don't catch it from providing care for the people that you spread it to. We're not, we ain't talking about providing care because those are essential workers. You no, know I'm saying like, if, but if in a lot of cases people are going to get tested, finding out they have it, and they sending them back home. So if you went out in the streets and you kicked it and you brought it back no, home, you got to no, take listen, care of the people in your house. Well, yeah, because if you go and you get tested and your ass got it, you came from home. Go back. <laughs> <laughs> Go back. Go back. Tell them what you got, and then all y'all motherfuckers stay home. Right. Don't nobody else go nowhere else. Right. Nobody so continue to self quarantine until further notice. All of you. All Can't of nobody you. go nowhere. Don't get no deliveries. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All you can do is FaceTime. You tell somebody, look, the money is in the envelope, in the mailbox, leave the food at the door. Right. Or better yet, just give them your credit card number and tell them yes. to drop that shit off and ring the doorbell. Yeah, because a lot of places now are doing contactless delivery. Listen, come on with it. Look, okay, so now look. Oh, that's wild. So we talking about Dr. Phil, right? Yes. All right. But Dr. Phil is not the only person I want to talk about. Okay. Okay, listen. I just want to go on a record and say, Dear Hollywood. Mm. Fuck your appreciation commercials. <laughs> listen. You did say that. Listen. <laughs> I don't, listen. Don't pacify me with words that you don't read off a teleprompter telling me that I'm your hero. I am the mother of three essential individuals. Right. I'm essential myself. You want to show me how much you care about me? Mm-hmm. Petition rally start a movement to up my pay yes and the pay of my three other three essential children wipe out my student loans take care of that please while you standing in your restaurant style kitchen (laughs) looking in your refrigerator that takes up more than half the wall in that joint yes when you are standing in the bedroom of your multi-million dollar mansion talking about how confined you feel and your bedroom bigger than my whole damn downstairs including the kitchen right and you're confined right you feel imprisoned with all the trappings that one would love to have you got bowling alleys and movie theaters in your house basketball courts in your house in your house jacuzzi you pool can go in to a whole the nother house side of, you can go to a whole nother side of your house <laughs> and a it whole, feel like a new you spot could, you <laughs> you could send everybody in your house to a different room mm-hmm. and have to use an intercom to interact yes. because y'all so far away look miss me 
please, Hollywood, miss me. <laughs> miss me when you sitting up there and you on FaceTime with your makeup artist perfect makeup. Right. <laughs> But you've been in quarantine, but you look like you look like you just stepped off a set. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and but you're you're our heroes. You're my hero. You're... Am I your hero? If I'm your hero, mm -hmm. then what I would like for you to do is draw attention to the fact that minimum minimum wage needs to go up. Draw attention to the fact that these companies are not taking care of the people that are taking care of them. Right. Okay. Absolutely. Draw attention to the fact that the government needs to do better, needs to do more. Yeah. And we need to get people paid. Draw attention to the fact that these essential workers and, and everyone else, let's not just talk about essential workers in this instance. Let's talk about how the government can mandate that these banks stop collecting mortgages mm -hmm. for the next six months. Let's talk about how the government needs to mandate you want to give these you want to give these companies a great big ass tax write off mandate that they continue to pay their workers mm. their regular salary on a regular schedule for the next six months without having to report to work. If you are a full time employee, then you get your full time check. Right. If you're a part time employee, then you get your part time check. These companies can afford to do this. They can afford this. Yeah, they These can. are multi million dollar companies. Yeah. They can afford to pay their workers for the next six months and and let them stay home. Absolutely. Now I now now I'm not a greedy individual. I'm not. So mm -hmm. let's just say do one or the other. Let's just say Nobody pays rent. Nobody pays mortgage for six months. Okay. If you essential, you go to work. But if you're not essential and you have to stay home, you ain't got to worry about not having a roof over your head because you don't have to pay nothing for six months. No way. Right. And if you do get some money, you can either stack that money or you can use it when you need to go to the store to buy your essentials like groceries. Exactly. and Exactly. Mandate that DPNL and Vectran don't collect nothing for six months keep that shit on for six months why you can't why not why you can't right. do that why you can't keep these keep the country going you done found 500 billion dollars to get to so-called get these small businesses out of debt right of which they can't even receive because these larger companies took all the took money took all the damn money these yeah. 20 million dollar these fit 500 these dang look i can't even talk right look <laughs> they taking 10 million dollars they taking 20 million dollars money that they have they sitting on a surplus of 80 million dollars yeah. and you taking another 20 from the government out the mouths of these people out of the hands of these small businesses because you just that damn greedy right like we we have some friends who who own some some local businesses right here in the city and i was you know kicking them information like oh here's another grant to apply for and the very next day the story came out that all the money was gone but then you got a restaurant like like uh saxby's that took or zaxby's they took 40 million dollars that's you didn't big, need that's it bigger than the one that's crazy and then and what is it shake shack yes. they're giving back the money yes, that they, they had 10 million dollars and they giving that back no they got 40 million dollars and shack, shack shack i thought they had 10 got no 10 million. they got 40 million and they're giving it Listen. back because it was a big deal like oh shake shack is giving back the money they got it was money they should have never got exactly. in the first place Look, you I, didn't heard, do nothing. I heard on the radio i was listening to the radio i was listening to uh no it wasn't the radio i'll take that back it wasn't no it was it was it was a news broadcast i was listening to and they were saying that the companies didn't do anything illegal right that is on it's 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 the government's responsibility to make sure that money is being appropriated to the right places and i say what i say to that is um that may be true mm -hmm. but that don't mean that it's right well and that may be true but if, if that's the case you still if you didn't do anything illegal you still applied for it well that's this is the my, government that didn't to, automatically listen, give it to this you, brings you me to my, for this it. brings me to my next point this brings me to my next point the issue is not whether or not they did anything illegal right the issue is whether or not they did something moral right and that's not moral it's right. not moral for them to know that they are these this this big conglomerate 
Mm -hmm. corporate you know that money is not appropriated for you you know you don't need that like let it be who it's meant for why are you so greedy why do you have to have everything you gotta have all of it all of it all of it you gotta have all of it and then the thing the thing about that is this why you you're taking you're taking this money that's set aside from these people uh, these these smaller businesses and you're going to use it to pay your people also that you can do what with the other 80 million dollars that you got sitting in a bank right well you saw so what you happened can live off of it? did you see what happened with harvard harvard not harvard was given 37 million dollars harvard has an 81 billion dollar endowment so they didn't need those millions at all so now that they got caught with the hand in the cookie jar, now they're like, oh, well, we're going to give the money back. Listen, it's money you should have never listen, took. And listen, you listen, know. people, listen, people. This is what I need you people. This is what I need you people to understand. All this shadiness is coming from these elites. Yes. All of this shadiness, all of this crookedness, all of this inhumanity, right. all of this moral corrupt character all of this savagery is coming from the very same people that stand in judgment over you Mm -hmm. that tell you you wrong or you not right or what you want is Mm -hmm. these are the same people when are you gonna wake up and you gonna you like come on when are are we gonna wake up and understand that these that these big corporate it's wrong you know what I'm saying? It's just right. And we can vote the we can vote these people out of Congress. We can stop these people from making any more money. We don't we have to go back to those places and frequent those places. And that's what I was gonna say. It's just like, you know, as we talked on one of our episodes before about getting back to to the nature of us, us as a people, us as African Americans, us as humans, us as the lower you know class in the economy to start shopping locally with stop, each other exactly stop giving these big clients stop the because they they've shown us that they don't care yes, nothing they don't about care us. they don't care about us they don't care about our loved ones they don't mm-hmm. care about they don't care about this country listen if you are taking if you are taking money that you don't need right if you are being shady in your business practices you don't care about the economy of this country. No. You don't care about this country or the people in it. Excuse me. Because that's what that is what's destroying the country. Right. So come on. You already got these banks that want to discriminate against you. You can't mm-hmm. get a loan if you haven't already gotten a loan. Who said that was a stipulation of the right. loan anyway? Well, they right. That's, these that's like saying up these rules. You need ID to get ID. I'm trying to get ID. I don't right. have anything to give you as an ID because I'm, I'm trying, trying to, to get, get ID. an ID. Exactly. Exactly. What, I, the, the same way we like uh, first time renters. They go, you know, you go to get an apartment and they go, oh, you're a first time rental. You don't have any rental history. We need a rental history. How am I supposed to get a rental history if, if I'm I a first time renter? And, I then can't that, get one, and the ones that be like, uh, experience required. How do I get experience if nobody will give me a chance to get the experience? Exactly. Like, that don't make sense. It makes no sense at all whatsoever. Like, you know, we we have a son who was trying to, you know, emancipate himself. So I went to try to, like, help get an apartment. I got turned down for an apartment because they said, you have no rental history. I told them I've been a homeowner for 16 years. And they're like, yeah, but you don't have any rental history. And I was so confused, like... I've owned a house for 16 years and my house is paid for. So that don't establish. And and I wonder how many of our white counterparts go through such. Yeah, I was I was so tripped out. Like, wow, I can't even I can't even get in an apartment. I wonder how many of our white counterparts go through such through such obstacles. Yeah, because that was that was absolutely crazy. But what we need to do, what we need to do, Mm -hmm. we need to. Start frequent, start frequenting those small businesses that's in your community. Yeah, especially black people. Yeah, shop and and shop and another local. thing too, black people, because a whole lot of the businesses that's in our community is not ours. Say so that. what we need to do is we need to start getting together, and we need to start being creative and coming up with ideas and start opening our own shit. Speaking of which, I saw that you made a post about that uh, on Facebook the other day about. You know, when the shops and things start opening back up, we need to 
frequent and and you and know support people that do that that, that look that, like us that have our best interests yes, at heart. Stop and then, giving these our money and to I saw, people that uh, don't respect us or like us. So I think it was like somebody that had commented and was like, "But the Chinese people own all the hair shops." Not true. Oh wait. So wait. Wait. Don't make. Don't make me go on because I did not see that comment. Honey. <laughs> don't make so me look, go on Facebook. So, so that leads me into my next point Mm-mm. that a lot of people don't know and don't realize. And, and I don't know the owners of this business at all. I have no affiliation Look, with them uh-uh, whatsoever. But on. I got to give a shout out to uh, Black Is Beauty. They are a black owned hair shop on Linden Avenue. You look them up. It's a funny way that they, you know, spell the black is beauty. But if you type it in on Facebook, you know, it will come up. You know, go frequent them. It's owned by. I think it's four or five black women and they're giving back to the community. They've got great specials going on right now for people that are quarantined and doing your hair at home. So look them up on Facebook, go find them, find you a, a, a black nail tech, a black barbershop. If you haven't already, you know, go look into those kind of ways to, to shop small, shop local, shop with people who look like you who seem like they have your best interest at heart okay now nah, girl that must be somebody else post you know <laughs> i like, put oh, that on my, so look, you didn't look it up hey no nah, you know i put that on my post <laughs> <laughs> okay exactly maybe it wasn't but i know like, it's like i saw if i would have seen that i would have like, went Hell, like at that, you know, at that time, I, I was seeing like a whole bunch of that, you know, shop I with see. your own, da, 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 and people like, well, we don't own no hair shops. Actually, yeah, we do. There's a black hair shop yeah, owned by and not to four mention, beautiful look, black look, women. Understand okay. something? Do a search on Facebook because there's at least three different places. There's at yeah. least three people in our area uh, that does, and I want to say, I think it's uh, Crown Me Coils or coil oh yeah, Crown, Crown Me someone. Coil Me, yeah, yeah. that's, that's now, Jerica. And, and I've never, I've not used any of her product. I'm just naming that she is a person yeah. and that she's owns a business. So yeah, she's, in the she's hood. got a shop and everything. Yeah, there are some other, there are some other people. I'm gonna just go ahead and look it up because I don't want to just shout out one person. You know what I'm saying? And just. <laughs> I ain't trying to be, you know, and then I got to find, I got to find them too, for real, because I ain't even sure who they are, because there's a lot of, because I just recently, I just recently, um, got, um, information about, um, hold on, I'm trying to see, oh, I just recently got information about some natural stuff, you know what I mean? Okay. And so, huh. No, I already accepted them as friends, so now I gotta figure out who they are. No. But <laughs> well, you know, there's like I have a Vanity Bird. Shout out to Vanity. She's got Bye Bye Love Organics, mm-hmm. and she makes body butters and lotions and face oils and face scrubs and stuff like that. I just saw something. And Somebody it, suggested that I get on something that I like a page called Vagina Vixen. Oh, how could you not? You got to check that out. Oh, I'm Check out Vagina Vixen. Hey, they was talking about all this smell good this and smell good oh, that. Okay. And it's all, it's natural products and stuff. Black operated, black owned. Look, lady, look, first of all, shout out to black women all around the world. You're right. I don't get, we are the shiznit. Look, understand we are. something. <laughs> Black women been doing that damn thing, okay? Now, don't nobody want to give us recognition. Don't nobody want to mm. come out here and just say that shit. But we in politics. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We keeping this shit together. You want you, you go into the hood. Who working, man? Who, who holding it us. down? It's black us. women. Look, and I ain't taking nothing from black men. But this ain't about y'all right now. I'm talking <laughs> about black women. I love y'all. Y'all the shit too. But right here, right, right now, it's about us. Now I'm saying, <laughs> black women the shit. Absolutely. We keeping this shit together. I'm essential. Most of the women, most of the people I work with are black women. They all yes. essential. You feel me? Yeah. You got black women out here that's making masks. Yes. Making masks, donating masks. Yes. You feel me? So I got a friend. She making masks. My my friend Tamika Brown. She out here now. I'm shouting her out because that's my homegirl and that's my friend. You can't call her and get no mask though. <laughs> okay. Okay. She only making masks for some essential motherfuckers. Certain people. 
you know, well, I feel uh, blessed to be essential. In the, you know, in the mass department, my uh, my sister in law has web of dreams. You can look her up on Facebook. She's making masks of um, NFL teams, collegiate teams, sororities, oh, she, fraternities. She's for real, for real. Oh, for she real. for real, for real with it. Like she's making custom masks. She, you can find her uh, web of dreams on Facebook. Listen. Look it up understand yeah it's this it's may going. be a time of diversity this may be a time where you are afraid don't look don't just look at what's negative also understand this is also a time for heightened awareness mm-hmm. this is a time for creativity ingenuity this is a time for new opportunity this is a time to recreate yourself reinvent yourself yes. readjust yourself it don't have to be bad. It don't have to. Be, no. It don't have to be all bad. Right. Cause it ain't good. No, but you but can it be don't productive. Have to be all bad. You you can you yeah. yes you can be productive. You can find a way to to make a way. You can get your grind on. We absolutely black women are the shiznit. Do you understand what I'm saying to me? We are. You're talking about making a way out of no way. You got people out of here. They done broke out grandma's sewing machine and right. they getting it in. They not just helping the hood. They helping the first responders. They yes. donating. They out here doing the damn thing. Right. You feel me? I mean, come on, man. All I'm saying is. Black women. Black women, shout them out. Black women. You know, and you, you're talking about, you know, making a mask to donate. I have um, another friend who's making masks, and she's selling them to regular people and using the profits to be able to make masks to give away to the essential workers. And see, talk about your karma and your blessings. So Look. I was like, that's that's Look. dope. So I'm going to charge you, but this nurse is going to get one hey, for free. Right. That's I dope. Don't feel, I ain't feeling all bad about you charging me. I don't mind right. paying that fee. Nah, not mm-hmm. at all. But yeah, I don't mind paying that fee because look at what's happening. You know what I'm saying? It, it becomes a it trickle forward. down. Yeah. yeah, it's a trickle so, down and effect. Yeah, and yeah, and she should reap some sort of profit from what she doing. Right. She should keep back five whatever six right. whatever dollars she can so she can keep on keeping on. And she should make a profit from it. And then her blessings are going to come in abundance in other ways. She's going to reap plenty riches other than monetary, financial. Oh, yeah. Her blessings is going to be in abundance. And understand, people, this is what it's about right now. It is. This is exactly what it is. The humanity of all this. Your, your humanity needs to come through. Somebody making a mask to sell so that they can make a mask to give away. That is a child of God looking after another child of God. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, looking after two of God's children. Right. And then you in turn purchasing that mask are also looking out. Right. For two of God's children. You giving her a profit to make while yes. also giving her the material that she needs to keep somebody else safe who's keeping other people safe and, and then the blessings continue and Right, and who's to say down effect. that one of the masks that she makes for, for one of these essential workers isn't somebody that's in charge of taking care of one of your loved ones or somebody that's connected to you. And that's the whole point so, of it. And that's the yeah, whole point of it. You, that, that's the whole point. The trickle down effect, the goodness will trickle yeah. down onto you as well. Just like when you do something bad oh, and that yes. shit trickle down, when you do it good, when you do that good, that, that trickles down as well. And it's important to, to do good for the sake of doing good and not always look for the Something blessing to come time. back because you know? you, because that's it's not always immediate no it's what not what you do today will not always be reciprocated tomorrow no and then you also have to understand that that blessing that comes to you may be tenfold it may not even be as small as the gesture that you that you exactly. gave to someone else it may be something bigger yeah so it's important to you know, do it from the heart. Do it for the right reason. Always, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't ever look for the for right. Like, I ain't going to lie to you. You know what I'm saying? I, I do what I do. I don't feel like I get paid enough for what I do. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I do what I do, not for the pay, but because I love doing it. Right. And, there, and, I, and, I, tr- and I do more. I care. And I care in a, in, a, in, a, in a way. I care in a way that's rewarding to my spirit. Because it's not just about the paycheck that I receive. Right. I can go in and I can do a job, but if I do that job and I don't put any heart, any feeling, any care Mm -hmm. into what I'm doing, then all it is is a paycheck. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really caring about the person. I say that all the time. I mean, you know, in my line of work of, you know, being an educator, you know, we, I'm not going to say we don't get paid enough. Some of us don't get paid enough because for the ones that that are truly dedicated, that truly care, 
that work outside of, of eight to three and go above and beyond and not to necessarily big myself up but I am one of those people I'm always thinking in teacher mode I'm always like what can I do better how can I fix this how do I help this kid how do I reach this kid how do I do this so no I don't get paid enough and right now with with this whole corona situation I'm working even harder as an educator trying to make sure that my kids are logging in to you know do their work and trying to keep them motivated and all of that so yeah so for the for the government for the the powers that be you want to thank me pay me more wipe out my student loans because okay. I feel like I'm only working to okay. pay my student okay. loans start stop <laughs> look you bailed out these banks you bailed yeah. out these companies now when it comes time to bail out the American people these banks and these and, companies and need to whatever. bail us out I agree they need to bail us out and it's it's so funny that that these these jobs are not necessarily jobs but these these jobs and these things that you thought were important before corona mm-hmm. that have now gone away since corona mm-hmm. and you see what has taken rise like if that don't flip the tables in your mind like, wait a minute Think all of this it. stuff we thought yeah. we needed that we thought have, was important you have to be out in traffic every morning at 6 30 a.m yeah. trying to beat rush hour traffic you mean to tell me i could have been on the computer the whole time getting my work in right i don't have to get i don't have to be up at 4 a.m i don't right. have to be up at 6 a.m to get up get my i don't i can we can all be at home doing this right you know what i'm saying we can all do this and keeping everybody and safe the, and, at the same and, time and think about it too like this think about it too like this you know what i'm saying because i'm feeling where you coming from as a teacher from the teacher's perspective and i'm not you know what i'm saying but i'm just thinking of it like this you don't have the distractions of a classroom you don't have the distractions of say a unruly person mm-hmm. or you know a, a fire drill or you know what i'm saying any of that right you and this and doing it this way enables you to have the one-on-one time that right. some kids need yes. in order to jump over that learning curve yes and and the kids are asking me questions that they weren't asking me at right. school right. because they because they're afraid of this of the stereotype are you stupid you dumb you can't read right. well, now nobody knows about. right because you're facetiming me one-on-one or you're sending I me was, a private email I yeah was, it's it's for that aspect it's been good but i do miss i saw some of what my kids. i feel you i saw on on, on red table talk because i like red table talk with jada and the, oh yeah the, they are right but anyway i saw where this woman was talking about she always felt that her daughter could do better than a c average in school and her daughter is autistic Mm -hmm. and she says since she's been home her daughter's been making a's and b's and she said it makes her want to cry because she always knew she could do it she said the online learning seems to have built her daughter's confidence and i think that that's what's happening with a lot of kids especially when you're dealing with inner city kids where the classrooms are overpopulated you got kids that don't that there are some that don't learn or don't know and so they do disrupt the classes because of their own embarrassment because of their inability to do what what they should be doing right, right then you know and then you got right. the kids that dumb themselves down so that they don't seem like nerds so they can be cool yep. you know all of that you know what and i'm saying then, and and i you know i don't want to i don't want to be debbie downer but we do have to face the reality as people as parents as educators that some kids don't want to learn some kids don't want to go to school and you know what and we force this education down their throat the way that we do and of course that is what makes them bounce back push back and destroy and no, a no, class you know room. what and i it's, think that this will help some kids under feel their niche as to yeah. how they learn and what they learn and when they learn because those kids Mm-hmm. Are the kids that's going to be mechanics? They're yes. going to work in factories. They They're don't want to use get it hands. from a class. They don't. They don't. They don't. They don't want to sit in there and take a test. They don't want to no. do that. And and to them, it's not even. It's not because they're dumb. It's because they're looking at it on a piece of paper. And yeah. it's and it's not something that you can do to figure out. Some people need to do to figure. Yeah. Out. I need to. I need to read. I need to push do this so I can read this mic, and know what right. five tenths is you know what i'm saying right. how, let I me need, take it apart and put yeah, it back together ta- exactly. versus let writing the paper it about it. And put absolutely it back together yeah and then they figure out they niche like that like I, my child my child p- put some shit on paper he he cool on that mm-hmm. but you put some stuff in front of him that he got to figure out exactly it's done he can do that i like it i like it too we need to stop though because we getting that that um 
We're getting to wrap it up. Yeah, we're wrap, it up, that, wrap it up, baby. Wrap it up, You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, hey, look, these corporate look real talk. We need to protest. You want to protest something? Stop protesting staying in the house. What you need to protest is y'all big ass companies that's taking money from us. Yes. Give it back. Y'all big ass companies that don't want us to stay at home that's going that's willing to open up your doors and have a shoulder to shoulder to cut up some freaking meat. What you need to do is have us stay at home. Pay us the way you was going to pay us for the next 6 months if we would have right. showed up for work. Right. You know what I'm saying? And 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 keep this company, keep us safe, keep the country safe, and keep yourself in business for the future. If we all come in to work today and we die tomorrow, what the fuck company you gonna have anyway? Absolutely. <laughs> I like it. So if you like what you're hearing and you want to hear more, you can find us anywhere you find your favorite podcast, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you can always email us at flywithusla at gmail.com. I'm Lady Bounce. Hey, this is my therapy, y'all. I'm Kryptonite. And we out of here. <laughs>